So sitting here with Father Mike Schmitz, it's good to see you again. <laughs> good to see you, Chuck. Yeah, thanks so much. Absolutely. And uh, it, it's unusual to think that we could be in the penthouse, like 14 yeah. foot or 14 level up on a cruise ship yeah. overlooking an island. O yeah. over in the ocean, the island, it's amazing. Yeah, isn't that great? It's, it's good to be on this side too, because on the other side there's another ship and it's not as yeah, it's not busy. As good, not as good looking as, as this. <laughs> yes, yeah, busy. The ocean. You've been busy, right? I mean, you've yeah. been flying around a lot the past couple of weeks. It's been a lot of travel. Yeah. That's been happening, which, yeah. is, which is, I can't complain. It's uh, better to stay busy, I guess, than not. So this is a, a good news cruise. For anyone who's watching who may not understand, there are many definitions to good news, but there's the good news. The good news, yeah. Right? Yeah. What the is gospel. that? The gospel. Yeah, so, so the good news cruise is uh, put on... Uh, organized and, and executed by Corporate Travel, yeah. um, a group out of Michigan, obviously. And uh, it is an opportunity to come on board a ship, have an incredible vacation, as well as have uh, that whole time spent with prayer and with speakers and with opportunities to connect with other other Christians, other Catholics. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just to, to grow in your faith and grow in if people married, married, that's kind of been the, the theme of the last few, mm -hmm. um, to grow in your marriage. And it's been just an incredible opportunity. So, you know, this is the third cruise my wife Susan and I have been on, Good News Cruise, and yeah. she looked at me at the beginning of this cruise, and she said, this one feels more like a marriage retreat, mm. and I thought that was a high compliment. Yeah, yeah. Do you get that kind of feedback, too? Yeah, that's, well, I, I uh, haven't heard specifically those things yet, but yeah. what I have heard is that um, it has felt definitely, that, that, this, that the conferences in Good News Cruise, Cruises have gotten better and better. In that yeah. sense of like, oh man, because last number of years, I went on half of one uh, two years ago, and I was like, this is incredible, and it was incredible. Um, and I joined this one halfway through, so the next one I get to like actually stay the entire time. Okay. Um, and then I'll be able to get a good assessment, you know, get my finger yeah. on the pulse of how everyone's doing. Yeah. When you think of all the couples that are on this cruise ship, uh, what do you think they're getting from your perspective without hearing feedback? What is it that you're hoping, I guess, right. married couples get out of this cruise? Yeah, no, I, what, one of the things I've seen uh, or heard, I have, have heard some feedback, because every, everyone I ask, like, how is it going so far? How is the conference, you know, part mm -hmm. of, the, of the cruise? And like, oh man, incredible. They're, and they're talking about incredible, like at mass, just an opportunity mm -hmm. to pray with each other, and it, which seems like just, here's mass in a kind of ballroom-esque area. Right. But it still uh, has this reverence to it, has this uh, intimacy to it. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's, it's beautiful. But also this uh, opportunity to have time with each other, yeah. hearing good content. I asked some couples last night. I said, uh, they, I asked them what they did after you know the talks. And they said, oh, we we went for a walk and just talked about what we heard. And so they were like processing. It wasn't just kind of this. Oh, that's a nice talk. Took some notes yeah. and put it away. It was went to the talk. And then afterwards, they just sat down with each other or walked around with each other and just processed with each other. Mm -hmm. And there's something so powerful about that because or else, or else you just kind of forget what you heard. And yeah. it's like, well, that was nice, but it's not transforming. Uh, it seemed more transformative for these couples because they've been immediately applying what they've heard. And, you know, I spent a lifetime in television news, which we always heard the, the phrase breaking news. You right. hear it too, yeah. right, at home or wherever you're traveling. It's kind of today more like broken news. Right. So right. the idea right. that you can go somewhere yeah. and hear good news, yeah. which obviously can be the gospel of the kerygma, but can go beyond that, that literally you're surrounded and maybe bathing in not just Catholic content and Christian content, but that you're actually getting good news that you look at couples and we were seeing couples, uh, we're married 42 years. That's awesome. And, uh, we're meeting couples that are married eight, ten, yeah. and thinking they're getting encouragement. We don't even know we're encouraging, right? right? right. But maybe we are. Yeah, and I there's a, you know a newlywed couple even who's here, yeah. but like you said, across the gamut uh, from just married to been veterans, you know, yeah. that that sense of um, hearing encouragement and not only encouragement but some direction. Yeah, when it comes to like here's some next steps you could take as a couple, here's some next steps you can take as a family. I mean, even as, as an individual, when it comes to like growing in your faith, because mm -hmm. yeah, broken world, we live in a broken world, but we sure. live, the world's still good. And God is still God, God yeah. is still good. And to be reminded of that is, I think we all need that. We all need to be reminded of um, the fact that God is still good and you, God is still God. You said something at mass, maybe it was yesterday, when someone, <clears throat> maybe with Ascension, somebody wants to tell you the numbers of downloads, yeah, yeah. you're like, I don't want to know. Yeah. Literally, that's what you look like. <laughs> and I thought that's so interesting. 
is that a is that a matter of keeping yourself humble because you've got to know that Bible in a year and catechism in a year is reaching so far out talk about bathing in Catholic media you're you're making the splashes you know yeah I mean I they, they have told me numbers you know at yeah. times. I'm like okay but part of it was actually thinking of David and he oh, remembering yeah. the people and I was like I don't want to fall into that trap like it seemed like he just kind of stumbled into that and I'm like I don't want to stumble into that either um, but when it comes to the catechism when it comes to the Bible those two podcasts uh, there seems to be less I mean personally there seems to be less danger as far as letting it go to my head hmm. in the sense that you know, I have two other podcasts that don't involve reading someone else's book mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just my thoughts <laughs> and it doesn't do as well as the other two it's like oh so that if I let that go to my head, the fact that when I started reading the Bible, I started reading the Catechism, it, it did better, then I would be foolish. That would be foolish of me because it's very, very clear that the success is not me. The success is the fact that people are hungry for the Word of God. Mm. And people want to know the Catechism. They want to know what is it that we believe as Catholics and mm-hmm. why. And so that's, that's a, there's less danger, I think, there as, as I, I don't take too much credit for it. Yeah. You know, just yeah. get to read the words. And how do you, uh, I guess it's a hard question to ask because um, I've watched you meet people and I, just by watching you walk around, you know, you're so humble, you're dealing with the comments that are coming in. We saw an older lady follow you up the stairs yesterday <laughs> and she literally said, I would never have read the catechism if it weren't for right, catechism yeah. in a year, listening to it, right? And maybe that's just her particular way that she likes to tune in. But your fingerprints are on the journeys of so many people, yeah. including my own and my wife. So there is something that God is doing. Did you have a feeling before that started, th- those efforts, that you were headed down this path? That's a good question. Wow. Um, you know, I, there's two things that, that come up that, that when you ask that question, uh, it reminded me of two things. A number of years ago, um, I have a brother who just recently retired from the military after a long, pretty long career. One Thanksgiving, one of his other uh, uh, the man, man he worked with, another soldier he worked with, uh, came up for Thanksgiving. And he just was this, he's like my brother, he's just very man's man and very down to earth and very much, you know, his job puts him in a lot of danger on a regular mm-hmm, basis. Mm-hmm. And we talked about the Bible and he, 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 he talked about how like, he likes to read the Bible he likes to bring it with him because he says, if I'm out and I'm reading the Bible, I don't want to read it on my phone. He says, I want to read the Bible mm-hmm. because I want people to be able to see it and ask me about it. Um, but he had just come into faith. I remember thinking, I wish that I could, his name is John, it's like, I wish that I could make something so that John would like be fed, you know, something mm-hmm, that, that, mm-hmm. that these men and women who serve our country, men and women who just put their lives on the line, go into harm's way, that would help them. And, I, and years later, years later, wow. I do that. Another was, um, I watched this movie once where there was a Muslim woman who was tuning in on a, on a podcast yeah. of a Protestant preacher, and she was coming to know Jesus through that. I remember thinking, man, that would be to be able to be part of that people's conversions just because you can you can make this and then get it out there mm-hmm. and then here we are with the bible and the, and the catechism and that's what happens people have been you know for the last three plus years have been writing saying that that is part of their story um, including a number of uh, military men and women who <laughs> reached out and like okay good that was yeah that was for john and now it's for whoever so yeah that's great so looking forward uh this is a great cruise that you're kind of saying you're on half of it yeah. but next year you'll be on the ship 2025 in january whole time uh when you get on a ship what do you do to relax oh. is that possible i don't know we'll see <laughs> well, well i we'll mean you work out well, i'll see right? when when uh if I'm here the whole time, yeah. it'll be a different experience. Yeah. And my guess is there'll be more downtime as opposed to cramming all the stuff oh, yeah. into, yeah. into uh, the, short, the couple of days that I'm here. So your thing, though, to kind of uh, decouple, do you read? Do you go off and pray? I mean, uh, what do you do when we'll you're on the ship, when you have, when you have time? Yeah, we'll see. I'll find out. <laughs> oh, you, know? you haven't had any haven't this had time. Any time. <laughs> I'm going to find out, though. I, mean, I haven't gotten a chance to work out every day. Yeah, I've yeah. been here. I think this is my third day. So yeah. I've been able to work out every day so far, which is great. Um, I'm with you, so I'm paying a guy to work out for me. That's I don't good. have time That's today. Good. So. <laughs> That's good. Let him do it. Give him the hard work. Yeah. So uh, what would you tell people? Why, why would anybody who's watching this, maybe even catching this for the first time about the Good News Cruise, why join us next yeah. year? Why? Well, I think that there's a, um, one is for the fact that it's a great vacation. You could take as an individual mm-hmm. or as a, a married couple. Just phenomenal a vacation. Just beautiful. Secondly, but it's not just a vacation. Hmm. 
Uh, there is there's an aspect of like spiritual retreat, as you're saying, spiritual formation. I mean, how how rarely do we find ourselves in a place where you can take time aside and have it be a vacation where you get to get to rest, yeah. you get to relax, but also on a regular basis throughout the day, every day, you're getting formation. Like that's just it seems to be you know. Um, as priests and, and then deacons in our diocese, maybe around the world, we have to take time away for ongoing formation. I know that physicians have to do that. Other people, uh, professionals mm. have to do that where it's just like, okay, you need to get your hours in. But when it comes to our faith, we don't. When it comes to our faith, you might keep reading a book. You might listen to a podcast. But is there intentional formation that will help you in maybe the most significant relationship of your life, your marriage, um, or even just help you with the most significant relationship of your life with the Lord? To take that time aside would be so valuable. So your vacation, but not just merely a vacation, formation that so few of us get, and but so all of us need. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you as always. Yeah, same check. And uh, thanks again for allowing us to bathe in all kinds of Catholic media and and just the journeys that are being touched by you. It has to be an incredible thing. There's something else that I, I find that has worked for us on this ship. We live in a community where somehow over time, waving at cars and people became a thing. Yeah. And coming out of COVID, where you couldn't be in community, don't hug, don't kiss, don't man hug, don't, don't put up a Christmas tree. I mean, all the things that got us out of community. Yeah. It's pretty cool to walk down a hall and see the lanyard. Yeah, in, yeah. And, Good morning. It's just <laughs> nice to be in community, and it's nice to be with you. Yes, yeah, same. Yeah, good to see you. God Thanks bless. Thanks very much. God bless you, Thanks, too. Thanks, Father Mike. Appreciate it.